Hello and welcome to a type of video I haven't done very much of and that is haul videos. Uh, I think they're a bit of a thing from the past but I thought I'd do one today just because I went to London on the weekend as the title of this video uh, describes to the London MCM Comic Con um, and I've bought a ton of stuff uh, not just from Comic Con but you know from my weekend there and I thought I'd just do a video because I've bought quite a lot of little things that I'll never cover on this channel but I thought I might make for an interesting video or not I don't know let me know in the comments uh, if you like this I I don't think I'd do a lot of haul videos but you know occasionally I could do it anyway I'm gonna stop rambling now so we went to Comic-Con on the Saturday uh, in London but we did do some shopping my friends and I um, on the Friday and we went around some pretty interesting shops. So the first place we went to was the Bandai store in Camden in London. Uh, so I think this is kind of new, I think it opened uh, about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer uh, and as the description uh, says it is a Bandai Namco store. So it's got two floors the bottom floor is all gachapons, as you can see I did buy some of them. And the top floor is more merch, you can buy uh, statues and stuff, and also is where they had the Ichiban Kuji lottery. I'll get onto that in a second. So first off, I'll put this to the side. First off, I did of course go around the gachapon machines. They had like, I don't know, I'd say 50, 50 to 80, maybe 100 or something of them. Uh, the way it works, you put some pound coins in, you get a token, and each machine had a particular number of tokens it took to roll for a gachapon. So the first one I did, uh, as we can see here, I have opened all of these so I know what I've got, but I thought I'd show you guys, uh, is from the Taiko no Tatsujin series. I love Taiko. Um, played the Switch one a lot. Uh, we actually went to an arcade in London called Free Play City. Uh, if you are in London, highly recommend there. It's £10 entry, all of the games are free play and you can stay as long as you want. They've got loads of rhythm games, uh, quite a few fighting games. It's actually mostly that and there's kind of like some party games as the Bashi Bashi series. Uh, they had Taiko no Tatsujin 14, which I think is the newest one. Uh, so played quite a bit of that, played some uh, Theatre Rhythm Arcade, Project Eva. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling now. Uh, but anyway, I saw this and I had to get it. So that is the six varieties of Taiko. And I got Katsu-chan. I think it's Katsu-chan. Anyway, it's it's the girl. But yeah, very cute. Uh, I love this. It's, it's kind of plastic. Very small. Very cute though. I am very... Honestly, I kind of wanted to get more of these. They were a little bit expensive. They came to six pounds. I don't know how much that is in dollars. Like eight to ten dollars or something. But, you know, I, I was happy. Uh, so, next up, I then went for this one. Now, you can probably tell from the outside if you're a fan. But this looks like a devil fruit. So, this is the f One Piece Film Red um, Gachapon figure collection kind of things. So, it comes in a devil fruit, which you can take the sides off, I think, to make a, a stage or presentation thing. The instructions aren't fully clear. Uh, so we'll take a look at exactly who you can get. It's the Straw Hat Pirates from the film themselves. Uh, I saw this, I mean, I'd be happy with everyone. I really wanted Brooks, maybe, or Nami, or uh, Zoro, or maybe Luffy. Honestly, any of them would have been fine. And the one I got is Nami. Uh, there she is. So I'm going to go put her on a base and stuff, and I'll be happy. And here she is. Okay, that took a little bit of working out. So the capsule kind of breaks off, uh, You that's kind of like the bottom piece, there's a side piece there, there's a kind of thing that looks like the top of the gum gum fruit, uh, and this is kind of, uh, that's the kind of stage that you can place them in, and I think as well, according to this, it kind of, they, you, you can stack them, uh, which is cool, I only got one, again, they were £6, I mean, I... If I didn't know I was going to buy other things that weekend, I might have gone a little bit wild. But here she is. Uh, it is obviously Nami from... Well, I want to say One Piece Film Red, but she had a costume for that. She had like a different costume. But there she is. Nami is, hands down, I think, one of the best anime waifus. Um, still pretty new to One Piece. I'm watching the Skypiea arc at the moment, so... Uh, 
it's a while a, a while yet so I catch up to time skip but uh, there she is I'm very happy with that as I said I, I'd have been happy with any of the straw hats really but uh, the fact that I got best school is uh, not bad. And the third one then, this is something I couldn't pass up. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know uh, this is something I'm quite into. So let's look at the cheat sheet first. I say cheat sheet, you, you know what I mean. That is right, it is Gundam Ensemble. Uh, Forte, sorry, not Ensemble, uh, F. So. That is the variety there. There's five of them. I would have been happy with any of them. But as we can see, we got uh, a, a mass of things. Yes, the, this is a building. Uh, this is a building gashicon. So it's basically like a very mini gunpla. As you can see, though, from all of the parts and the colouring there, I did get Dom. Uh, I had a double check, but I'm I'm ninety percent sure it's Dom and not Leo space type, but uh, I guess I'll work out in a second when I build it. It's definitely not the top two anyway, but I've wanted a dom of some kind. Uh, it's sort of, you know, model kit or something for a while. I do love the colours. So anyway, I'm going to go off and build this now. This, this is going to take a while, but I'll be back, hopefully, with it built. All right, I think uh, it might have taken me longer to build this than the rest of the video is going to be. But there he is, that is Dom with his slightly bent energy sword. Um, he was he was very finicky. Honestly, not even going to go into detail. Uh, but there's a lot of internal, like the, the elbow joints were an absolute pain to do. He's kind of in an awkward position. Um, I don't want to move him too much in case I break something. I am very impressed with his uh, mon like mono eye ball bulb thing. It's very shiny. Uh, he looks really great. I do love Dom types. They're, uh, they're like I love the the paint scheme and stuff. It's very cool. I like him. Uh, it also comes with a bazooka. I couldn't be bothered to make that work. It's got alternate hands, as you can see. One of them's open. One of them's closed. I've got a spare one of each. The the stand is a little bit weird though because um, it clearly pegs down onto one of many holes here. But the only hole on his back is there. Which means that I'd have to like put it in that way, so I don't know. Uh, thankfully, though, his feet are particularly wide, so he's never going to fall over, really. I don't need a stand, but it's nice to have one there. Anyway, so these are the three gatches that I got from the uh, Bandai Namco store in Camden. Also upstairs was an Ichiban Kuji um, thing, and I got this. So for those of you who don't know, it is just kind of a lottery thing. You pay some money, you get a uh, kind of cardboard thing, you tear it open and you have one of various letters. A being like the big prize, I think it was a statue of, I think it was Deku or Izawa or something. And then B is like a slightly different one. And as you go down the alphabet, the prizes are less wild. There's like hand towels. Uh, and one of them, of course, is an acrylic folder. So this is the J prize. I think this might be the lowest tier prize. Um, so I it was £14. I don't know how much that is in dollars. Probably like 15 maybe 20 Uh So that's the back there. So I got a choice of who I wanted. I went with Hawks. Oh, these are stickers, actually. That's kind of cool. I really like Hawks. Um, there were quite a few there. There was Aizawa, Deku... Um, I don't think Ochako was there, because I'd have gone for her back ago, you know, there's there's lots of them. But there we are, so these are stickers, that's really cool actually, they're quite nice, kind of acrylic stickers, I think I might stick these somewhere. But yeah, I chose Hawks, I really like him, uh, and that is the acrylic folder, uh, My Hero Academia, Hawks there. On the other side is just that, and obviously that is the inside. I've got a ton of these, they're not super useful, I don't, <laughs> it's rare that I have singular pieces of paper or one or two that I need to keep stuff in but honestly the stickers are pretty cool yeah overall was it worth 14 pounds no not really but I mean these aren't technically exclusive to Ichiban Kuji anyway um then I went somewhere else in Camden and that place was Japan Craft uh so it's I think another new shop, it's quite big in there, it's got a ton of prize figures, a ton of manga, um, a lot of stuff really. But the thing that really caught my eye was there was a Gunpla section. So 
I bought the, this is a high grade, as you can see there, uh, the AMX004 Quebly from Gundam Zeta. Uh, so this is, I think, one of my favourite mobile suits. Uh, the, the front is absolutely amazing. That is how it looks. I love the just massive shoulders and the weird slightly beetle design, especially when it opens up. Um, yeah, this was definitely, I think, my favourite suit from Zeta. It's just, it's got so much going on. Uh, honestly, it's slightly a shame that this is a high grade. I would have bought a master grade of this, I think, because I don't know if they've made a master grade. Um, unfortunately, in Japan Craft, actually, there was, it was mostly high grades. But they did have some very interesting other um, model kits as well. It wasn't just Gundam, so, like... You know, there, there was a few things for everyone, um, but some of the kits were very expensive. There's... I can't remember what they're called now. There was a 20-minute mission there, but there was also the one with the anime girls, the, like, cute ones. Those were very expensive. There was an anniversary Miku model kit that came with a kind of uh, little robot as well, but that was, like, £190, uh, pounds, which is a lot. This, obviously, a lot more reasonable. £27, I think, is absolutely worth it. It's a hefty kit. It's very heavy. Obviously, a very big suit. Uh, and then I went to one more place in London, but not in Camden. That was the Japan Centre, which is a fairly long-running Japanese convenience store in London. Uh, it's near... well, it was near Piccadilly Circus. I can't remember where it's moved to now, but we found it. Uh, it's basically it's a standard Japanese convenience store. It sells food and stuff, so I bought some Karamucho, uh, hot chili corn snacks. I've had the super spicy ones before, but I've not tried these, so... So I'll give them a go. And I bought the Pokemon Sticker Gum. Pack. So this is a Sword and Shield theme. It comes with the standard Ramune bubble gum uh, that everything does in Japan, it seems. And it came with some stickers. It's got Skull Bunny, Snorlax, and Nickit. Uh, so very cute. Three uh, stickers there. So I'll probably be putting those on my trading card binders or something. And of course, there is a tradition every time I go to the Japan Center in London. I always like to buy a copy of Shonen Jump. Uh, so this is volume 45. Obviously, this isn't the 45th volume. They've restarted it quite a few times now. But it had a very cool uh, sort of cover here. I do like... Uh, I love the, the rainbow one piece thing. And of course, it's filled with, you know, manga and stuff. I'm not going to show you too much because it could be spoilers. I have sort of read the newest chapter of One Piece in this. I didn't exactly know what was going on. My ability to read Japanese is very weak, so I didn't. I didn't. I don't think I really spoiled myself. But yeah, they did have uh, Volume Forty Six as well. That had Deku on the front. Where I thought, ah, I don't have one with Luffy on. So yeah, um, one day I'll learn to read all of this. So that wraps up the Friday. Then it was Saturday, and time to go to MCM. And MCM this year was quite good. Um, so I went last May with some friends. MCM is the Comic Con uh, held in London every year. It's been going since like 2009 or something, I think. I went last year with friends. Um, and I'll be honest, it was kind of disappointing. It was mostly comics and Funko Pops. Two things I'm not super into. I mean, I like comics, but eh, no, I wouldn't go to a convention for it. But this year, thankfully, there was a lot more weeb stuff. So... I'll show you some other stuff I bought. The least exciting one, there was a Pokemon trading card vending machine. For 50 pence, you could get two cards. What did I get? Uh, pretty standard ones. I'm pretty sure I have both of these. But, hey, uh, you know, I think someone got a uh, hollow Annihilate, which, for 50 pence, along with something else, isn't too bad. Uh, the next thing, I bought a Korean 151 booster box. Now, I picked this up and bought it and thought it was Japanese. I just, I, it's my fault, I didn't read it clearly, but then I looked at the bottom there and realised that is Korean. So, um, I'm going to be using this for my Christmas imminent cardinder this year. So there's 20 packs, I need some more packs of other things, but I'll be opening up one a day, like an advent calendar, but with cards. And I try and learn to read Hangul which is the written Korean language. By then, it's fairly simple. I've got a month. I'll be, I will be—I think I'll be able to read it passably. I don't I won't understand Korean, but I'll be able to tell you what the Pokemon are called. 
another thing I bought this Pokemon related and Pokemon card thing is the Trick or Treat Booster Bundle. I've been meaning to pick this up. This is £20, pretty good, 50 packs. They're like three packs each. If you watched um, the Pokemon 151 Booster Battle I did with Tim, uh, he got me a pack of this at the end. Uh, two packs, actually. So yeah, I, I don't know what to do with these. I may open them up on a video, uh, or I may open some of them up and keep some. I don't know. Or maybe I'll give them out to trick-or-treaters. I don't tend to get many of those. And I also bought a blind box. This is a Digimon. Uh, I haven't bothered to translate that. It's Kigurumi, I think, which is where something dresses up in a kind of mascot outfit as someone else. And this is, of course, Digimon Adventure 01, as we can see here. That is all of the Digidescent dressed as their partner Digimon, the champion... Well, no, technically not all champion level, because that's Angie Woman, she's ultimate, because uh, Gatawan's champion. That is the lineup there. That I am curious about, because that is clearly Garurumon. Is that Black Garurumon, maybe? Because this is Volume 2. I wonder if maybe the um, the mystery one for Volume 1 was Black Greymon or something. That's the back. I have opened this. I do know what's inside. But again, I thought I'd show you guys because I'm never going to make a video on just this one blind bag I bought. So, who did I get? Uh, last chance to guess. I'm not going to do that cringe thing where it's like, let me know in the comments what you guessed. Because, you know, come on now. Uh, and that is Mimi as Togemon. Honestly, actually, one of the ones I wanted most. I'd have been happy with all of them. I really wanted Joe as Ikakumon. Um, but yeah, I love Togemon. I think there's a base. There is. I'm going to go assemble Mimi Togemon. And there she is. Very cute. Uh, so this did cost a little bit. I think this was like 12 or 14 pounds. I can't remember. But to be honest, the like quality of the statue, I really, I really regret not going back and buying another one. We did head back to the store, but I think they'd sold out by then. But it's even got her little cowboy hat. It is amazing. I am uh, I'm a big fan of this. I may buy some more online or something, because, uh, yeah, it's cute. It's, it's really big as well. It's, it's a hefty piece of uh, PVC. So I'll definitely be adding that to my Digimon shelf. Uh, and then there is one more thing that I bought at MCM. And that is the Vital Bracelet BE Demon Slayer special set. Uh, so if you've seen my stuff on the channel before, this is a version of the Digimon Vital Bracelet, uh, which is kind of a virtual pet, but also you, you wear as, a, as on your wrist. It's a bit like a Fitbit, kind of, but with a virtual monster that you raise. Um, so the BE is a modified, like, improved version of the old Vital Bracelet. Basically, it kind of boils down to it's better at reading your pulse and you can put your monster to sleep when you want rather than having to wait till night, uh, which is a big improvement because I have the original Vital Bracelet. It was great, but sometimes you'd go to, like, watch a movie in the cinema or something or sit down for a meal or just, like, relax for three hours and it'd be like, oh, hey, all the energy you've built with your monster is completely gone now and it'd be really annoying. So the ability to put them to sleep literally justifies me buying one of these. Uh, so they had quite a few of them. There was a ghost game set. There was this. There was another set I can't remember. But honestly, I liked, I've, so I've started watching Demon Slayer. I've seen the first season and Mugen Train. And I thought, hey, this is actually kind of cool. I love the green colour of it. And I thought, well, this is quite interesting. So as you can see here, you can raise... Um, well, you can raise a variety of characters. I mean, you can raise Tanjiro, but, you know, maybe you'll get Nezuko. Um, maybe you'll get Inosuke or Zenitsu or um, a lot of different characters, basically. But yeah, I was very interested. And obviously, this is compatible with other DIM cards, which are like the, the cards you put in to the Vital Bracelet that loads up a different monster with a different kind of uh, evolution chain. So very excited to give this a try. I'll probably be doing this in a video, so stay tuned for that. I may, you know, sort of compare it to the old Vital Bracelet and stuff like that. And the coolest thing, so I bought this from the Bandai Namco stall, that's two days in a row that I spent a lot of money with Bandai Namco. Because I spent above £30, this was £70, uh, which is, I don't know, $80, or something like that. Because of that, I got a bonus. Because I spent £30 or more, they gave me 
this Dragon Ball Super crayon set, or uh, kind of like they're wooden pencils, I guess. I haven't opened them yet, but you know, they're, they're coloured pencils, uh, but that's not all, because otherwise I probably wouldn't have really mentioned it. I also got this Dragon Ball Super sliding puzzle. It's been years since I've had a sliding puzzle. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing about with this. A uh, very cool picture of Super Saiyan God, Goku and Vegeta, but that's not all. I got even more stuff. I got a Dragon Ball Super tote bag. Uh, it, it's, it's fairly thin, but honestly, I really like the colour. Uh, I don't have a lot of tote bags, but, you know, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll probably store something in it or whatever. But that's not all. <laughs> it, it kept coming. Honestly, this bag was heavier than the Viper Bracelet, because I also got... Um, the drag well, so this is, I think it's Chapter 1 of Dragon Ball Super and Chapter 1 of Dragon Ball. So it kind of, uh, it's got a cool thing at the front actually, it explains the difference in the manga, same for the Dragon Ball Super side as well. Um, but then it is actually, you know, the, the first chapter of each of the respective mangas. There's first chapter of Super, uh, no, that was first chapter of Dragon Ball, right? What would, I can't remember. But anyway, yeah, it's, um, it's very cool. I mean, you know, I, if... Not necessarily the, the, the coolest, you know, collectible, but, uh, you know, if you want to read a bit of the manga, I'll get you into it. Plus, honestly, I may try and, like, frame this or something, because I love the I love the cover for Dragon Ball Volume 1. And that's not all. <laughs> I've also got a fifth gift. That's the Digimon Anime Heroes Beelzemon. Um, so at the, at the counter, he was like, hey, because you've spent £30, you get a free gift. You can choose one of the three Digimon Anime Heroes figures. So I've already got a Metal Digivolving War Greymon. I've got a model kit for Omnimon I haven't built yet. And I thought, well, I might as well go for Beelzemon. So a straight up figure, which is like, I'm pretty sure they sell these for like £20 or $25 or whatever. So this, this is crazy. I've got all of this stuff for buying one item at the stall. Uh, and that's part of why you want to make this video. I'm, I'm blown away that I've got quite a lot of value here so I'll probably be opening him for a video as well because um, I've been curious about the anime heroes figure line they're a lot cheaper than say SH fig arts or whatever but I don't know I I've been tempted to guess them especially the one piece guys like they're all they all kind of scale together as well so that would be cool um yeah that about wraps it up I I'll might as well end on this incredible haul so uh it is worth going to conventions sometimes, especially when they give you freebies. Even though, you know, I, I don't I don't need this stuff, I'm still happy to have it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble for, like, far too long. Uh, I will be doing other videos in the future. Obviously, as I mentioned, I'll be doing uh, an opening and review of this, that, and the Korean 151 booster box will be the basis for my upcoming Christmas advent card in there, so keep an eye out for that. I'll leave uh, some kind of playlist. I don't even know what playlist this is going to go into. But I'll leave that on the side. Let you two choose another uh, video for you. And until next time, goodbye.